You are listening to Productivity Straight Talk with your host, Amber De La Garza. Amber is a sought-after productivity coach, trainer, speaker, and writer who gives entrepreneurs the straight talk on personal productivity. No BS fluff or overused jargon, just actionable strategies to get results and succeed in business. And here is your host, Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. Welcome and thank you for listening to Productivity Straight Talk. Today is episode 183, a new year, a new micro habit. If you're a business owner who wants to improve your time management and elevate your productivity so you can maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most, then you're in the right place and I'm so glad you've joined me. Today, we're going to be diving into the topic of creating one new micro habit. And I thought it would be great to start off the new year and the first episode with this micro habit because I believe that many of you, maybe not you or a friend, but you know what I'm talking about, may be falling into the trap of I want to change all the things right now and it's the new year and everything is going to be different. I'm going to eat different. I'm going to drink my water. I'm going to move my body. I'm going to be more organized. I'm going to have better time management. I'm going to have business systems. You literally go on and on because you're coming into this new year with the mindset of a fresh start. And I am going to walk the talk and meet you where you're at, which is I know you want to develop a new habit for 2021. I know that you have the buzz of a fresh start and crisp air hitting you right now at the first week of January. But before we dive into the micro habit that I want to share with you today, I want to share with you why I believe that focusing on micro habits and building upon them is so important. It is important because I want you to have long-term success. I want you to show up consistently in any new behavior or habit that you choose to adopt. And consistency is the key. So if consistency is key, what I know firsthand and with all my years of experience is that when we try to change so much at once, very few, if any of the things stick because it gets overwhelming. It's too much to handle. It's too much change at once. I know that if you look at it as what is one micro habit, what is one behavior change that you are committed to making, and then you stick it, and then it becomes a habit, then you add the next and the next, and then you compound them one after another, after another, with consistent, long-standing behavior and habit change, That is key. So if you're meeting me for the first time, you search Productivity Straight Talk because this is the year you're going to be better at time management and productivity and growing your business, welcome. Welcome and know that I am here to help you have sustained long-term change. And that is not going to happen with these massive overhauling night and day changes from December 31st to January 1st. But what will happen is being selective and choosing to stack these wins and changes and behaviors on top of each other. And I guarantee what you look like and what you experience in your day-to-day and your business will be drastically different from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. So stick with me because we're about to jump right in. But before we do so, for those of you that have been around for a while and are longtime listeners, I want to invite you to join me inside Leverage Lab. Leverage Lab is my coaching, training, and accountability experience that you can join anytime. But don't wait for it to be anytime and keep kicking it down the road. Today is the day that I want you to join us so that you are investing in showing up consistently to make these changes for the long haul. So if you've enjoyed Productivity Straight Talk and you've gotten some great value from each episode, just wait until you join us inside Leverage Lab. You can learn more and join us today by going to amberdelagarza.com forward slash Leverage Lab. And now, let's get to the straight talk. Happy New Year. I want to wish you an amazing, prosperous, healthy, successful new year in 2021. 
And as I think about bringing in the new year, I also think about it as a time of celebration, a time to pop the champagne. It's a time of hopefulness and what is possible in the new year. As we welcome in the new year with some excitement and celebration, it made me think about how can we create more excitement and celebration in our everyday life. And that brings me to the micro habit of celebrating our small wins. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you why you're not celebrating your wins, why celebrating your wins helps you be more productive, And lastly, some creative ways to celebrate your wins each and every time. I am going to bet money on the fact that you are not currently consistently celebrating your small wins. You know, those little everyday wins of taking something off of your to-do list, closing that client, finishing that big project. And do you want to know how I know? I know because my clients that I talk to day in and day out are seldom celebrating their wins. In fact, one of the questions that I ask my one-on-one coaching clients in preparation for each coaching session is for them to rate themselves from one to three on how they would rate their productivity over the last couple weeks. And I very rarely get a three, although... There are more often times than not that they should be rating themselves a three. What I generally get is a two, a two and a half. And then the second question says, and why would you rate yourself that way? And then I get a list of all these wins. I did this. I did that. I accomplished this. I closed this client. I finished this project. I hired this person. And these are very specific accomplishments in the business or very specific accomplishments that they have accomplished in the business. And yet, they're not rating themselves a three. So when I get a check-in like that, before diving into what's next, or what are we going to uncover, or what are we going to topic are we going to coach on, I pause and I celebrate them. And that celebration looks a little bit different for each client, but I make it a point to draw that out and bring it to the table between the two of us. Because oftentimes it's almost said like, I did these things, but it still wasn't good enough. And I want to tell you, there is nothing wrong with celebrating your wins. In fact, I would actually venture to say that there's something wrong with not celebrating your wins. I want you to acknowledge the hard work it takes to show up, to be consistent, to do the hard things, to check those things off of your to-do list. But in an effort to chase that elusive carrot of that big goal or that really big accomplishment that may happen once or twice a year, I think that the success is the feel good of saying, I did good today. I did good today, and even if I can do better tomorrow, today was a good day. Now, I do not want you to lie to yourselves. I do not want you to tell yourselves that if it's truly not true. What I'm talking about is if you did a good job, freaking celebrate yourself. You deserve it. You deserve to celebrate yourself. You deserve to celebrate with your loved ones. Do it. It is not going to slow you down. It is not going to stop you from accomplishing more. In fact, I believe it will propel you to show up your best again the next day. Here is my ask of you. I want you to stop beating yourself up and I want you to enjoy the journey. And one of the ways to enjoy that journey is to celebrate your wins and to reprogram your beliefs and your thoughts around the day needed to be perfect. The week needed to be perfect. I needed to show up perfectly. And if I don't, I don't deserve to celebrate. And here's the deal. There is no day that's perfect. There's no week that's perfect. And there's no person that's perfect. So what I would rather you ask yourself is, did I show up my best? Did I accomplish something that moved my business forward? Did I show up? Some days, honestly, we just need to celebrate that we showed up. 
And I'm not trying to make light of that. I'm trying to tell you that there are so many people that are not showing up. And so if today the thing that you are willing to celebrate is that you showed up, then show up and celebrate. Because when we stop beating ourselves up and we stop telling ourselves all the ways that we did fall short or we didn't do everything we thought we should do, when we stop doing that and really highlight the areas in which we are doing our best, I believe it encourages us to show up over and over again. So here are some of the main reasons why I believe you are not celebrating your wins. Number one, you are your own worst critic. You are so hard on yourself. In fact, you're probably harder on yourself than you are on others. Show up and give yourself some grace. Number two, you may feel like a celebration is like giving yourself a participation award. Celebrating your small wins isn't giving yourself a participation award. It's having an honest conversation with yourself. Here's a great example that is outside of business. Let's say that you have a goal of eating healthy and you eat a really healthy breakfast and then you have a healthy snack and a healthy lunch and a healthy dinner. And then around 8.30, you go into the kitchen and you eat a piece of your kid's Halloween candy. Now, that one little slip up does not erase the success of the entire day. I would, I would invite you to stop and say, no, that one little mess up or eating that little piece of candy didn't F off the rest of the day. It took willpower. It took you showing up. It took you making the decision to eat this versus that. You ate a healthy breakfast and healthy snacks and healthy lunch and healthy dinner. The same thing is true for your business and how you show up in your business. Did you show up? Did you cross that thing off your to-do list? Did you have that hard conversation? Did you make that decision in your business? And yes, maybe at some point it didn't go exactly how you intended it to go, but that doesn't mean that the way in which you did show up is for naught. So celebrate those. Next, you Think that celebrating your wins diminishes the fact that you have more to do or you haven't quite reached the finish line. I what's coming up for me in this example is those little like meme videos where you see the runners or there's like people in bike races where they think they won the race and so they start celebrating right before the finish line and then person number two and number three comes by and like passes them up and beats them. <laughs> I if you haven't seen that meme, I'm gonna find it and put it in this week's email because I want you to see it. So I'm not talking about celebrating so early that you slow down and don't hit the finish line. But what I am talking about is recognizing that you are in a marathon, probably even a ultra marathon in business. So there are pit stops, there are milestones along this journey that are are worth celebrating even if you don't come in number one at the end of this ultra marathon. Because what I want you to do again is enjoy the journey, the journey of running the race, the journey of being a business owner. And part of that is going to be celebrating your wins along the way. Another reason I believe you're not celebrating wins is because you believe self-inflicting punishment is a motivator for you. Meaning if you celebrate, the opposite is true. If you celebrate, that demotivates you from showing up and getting to the finish line. And if that is a belief that you either hold or subconsciously hold, I would ask you to challenge that, to experiment with it, to see what it feels like to celebrate your win and ride that feeling of good good feelings into the next win and showing up the next day versus what does it feel like when you beat yourself down and you talk bad, bad about yourself or talk down to yourself or tell yourself it still wasn't good enough? Does that make you want to show up the next day and do your best work? Mm, I'm, I think not. Another reason I believe you're not celebrating your wins is that you are so overwhelmed and you are 
have your mind set on the big prize, the finish line, that you don't even register. Like it doesn't even process in your brain that you had a win. This is what I often see in the client check-ins is that they see them as things that they did, but they don't necessarily see them as wins or stepping stones to the bigger finish line. And so if you are really overwhelmed or really thinking way far in advance that you can't take it back to like, what did I do today that propelled me towards the finish line? I would encourage you to do that so that you do see it as a win. And then lastly, is that you simply refuse to acknowledge wins because you don't have time to. You're like, that's a waste of time. On to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And I would actually tell you that that would be my weakness, is that I am always thinking, what's next, what next? And I'm always 10 steps ahead. That's the way that my brain works. And so when I do have a win, I'm like, I'm already on to the next thing. Like that's, it's almost like it was inevitable to happen by the time it happens that I've already experienced any good feelings because I just knew it was going to happen. And then I'm on to the next thing. So I've had to practice slowing down and recognizing that this is the time to celebrate that win. That although in my brain, it was inevitable that X, Y, and Z was going to happen, It wasn't inevitable. What was inevitable was that it happened because I showed up. So can I celebrate that I showed up and I stayed consistent and that I took that thing to the finish line or I chose to do the thing? Now I want to jump into why celebrating wins helps you be more productive. I have alluded and mentioned many of these already, but I want to like really create the space in this episode to share this with you. One, I truly believe that celebrating your wins motivates you to keep going towards your bigger goals. Because who wants to show up again and again if you don't feel like you are doing something that's worthwhile or good or worth celebrating? Being a business owner takes a lot of grit and a lot of willpower to show up when it feels really hard. So why not do ourselves a favor and make it a little bit easier to show up again and again by celebrating the wins that we do have in our business? Celebrating our wins actually makes us happier. And when we're happier, we're more motivated. Celebrating our wins can also build our confidence. By slowing down and recognizing the things that we're doing good at will give us the confidence to do the things that we're not so good at and for us to show up. And lastly, when you are celebrating your wins, you are having a positive self-talk conversation with yourself. And when we are consistently positively talking to ourselves, we have a strong mindset, which affects our motivation, which affects our attitude, which affects how we show up our best. It's all intertwined. And imagine this, with one tiny micro habit of celebrating your wins in the moment along your journey can have this impact of actually enjoying the journey and actually showing up consistently. What would your business look like if you were showing up your best consistently? I would venture to say your business would show up a lot better and all because you committed to the micro habit of celebrating your wins. So this brings me to our last subject, which is how do you celebrate your wins? How does this become a micro habit? I am literally talking about taking a moment and being like, hell yeah, I just did that. Verbally, either externally or internally, celebrate. Celebrate your win by sharing it with someone that you care about, your loved ones, or a friend, or a colleague, or a team member. Just taking a moment to recognize the win. Another way that while I don't do this, I thought this was such a cool way to recognize your wins and build upon them is to write them down on little pieces of paper and then put them in like a clear glass jar on your desk. And these could be little wins or those medium sized wins. And then as time goes by, you literally can see them with your eyes stacking up the wins that you had. And when you're having a hard day or rough day or need to pull on some previous motivation you can read through and pull some of those wins out and know that you can do hard things. You can show up. You can get things to the finish line. So that was a great way of utilizing writing it down and being able to visually see it for the future to use that compounded effect of the win. 
You can also have uh, small gifts for yourself. You can get yourself a treat or an extra special cup of coffee, or maybe there was something on Amazon that you wanted. You can gauge and judge the gift that you want to reward yourself with, and it can be as elaborate as you want or as simple as you want. However, if all you walk away from from this episode is having a newfound appreciation and positive self-talk with yourself as that win and celebration and award, I would call that a win. I don't think that you actually have to buy yourself things or maybe eat things to really experience the positive effects of celebrating and recognizing your wins day to day. I have loved having you listen to this episode of Productivity Straight Talk, and I sure hope you enjoyed and found valuable the conversation about celebrating your wins, big and small. I would like to close out today's episode by sharing one of my favorite sayings, and it's a work in progress is progress. So celebrate the progress, celebrate the journey. We are all a work in progress. Being a work in progress is not a negative. It is in fact recognizing that we are showing up and making progress. No change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you or your business. So what I would love to do is invite you to incorporate celebration in your day-to-day life big or small, pausing and recognizing the work that you do and how you show up every single day. If you've enjoyed today's episode of Productivity Straight Talk, don't keep it a secret. I would love for you to share it with a fellow business owner that you think could find value in today's episode. Go ahead and hit the share button on any app that you are listening to this episode in and share it with a friend and let them know you were thinking of them and thought they would enjoy it. And if you have not already done so, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss another episode of Productivity Straight Talk. And lastly, as a reminder, I would love for you to come join us inside Leverage Lab. To learn more and to join us today, head on over to amberdelagarza.com forward slash Leverage Lab. So that's my straight talk for you today. Until next time, have a productive week. Mm -hmm.